Now it's time for the sponsor perspective portion of our program. Please welcome Otis Rowley, president of Wells Fargo Foundation, in conversation with the general manager of the Hill, Joe Ruffalo. Otis, great to see you. Thank you for uh, being here this morning. It's good to be here. Uh, as a bank, Wells Fargo serves roughly 10% of small businesses in the US, so that's millions of small business owners. Where can Wells Fargo meet the needs for capital today, and where do you see the opportunity to do even more? Well, first of all, again, it's, uh, it's an honor to be here and happy to have the opportunity. So, you know, Wells Fargo serves uh, about 3 million small businesses around the country. Um, about one in every 10 uh, small businesses. And so we have a, a, a unique relationship and a, a clear kind of understanding of the small business ecosystem because of that. Um, is when we talk about small businesses, we're really talking about those uh, with about 10 million or less in, in revenue. Um, and, uh, and so I think we are very uniquely positioned and uniquely qualified to, to really have a firm understanding of, of what their needs are um, and, and recognize that they are so essential to the, to the overall success and health of not just our communities, but of, of, of our nation. Wonderful. Tell us more about the collaboration with Hello Alice and the Global Entrepreneurship Network. Why did Wells Fargo want to stand up the new $70 million fund and how will it help the small business owners? Sure, so we're uber excited about, uh, about the opportunity. We know any of this work is not just in the hands of, of banks, right? That overall, if you're gonna do this, you have to have a partnership. And, uh, and the, the ability, the opportunity to partner with, uh, with uh, Jen and Hello Alice, it's just, it was really exciting to us because we know uh, that these disparities exist. Um, we know that every small business is not going to have a million dollars in revenue on day one, right? And so you have to, you have to really address the the issues that are creating those disparities and really meet meet those small businesses where they are. And that's what's so exciting about this, the the opportunity to unlock a billion dollars in in credit uh, with that seventy million dollars um, made it a lot of sense for us to to be in and, and to be in early. Uh, we know that it's the number one issue for small businesses is the lack of access to capital and credit, period. Right? Uh, and, and we know that it's, it's also around technical assistance and support. Uh, and that's what was really exciting about both the tool and the fund, is that there's the opportunity to provide these small businesses with those resources that they need to really try to, um, to really be successful early on. Uh, and, and so we, I, I really think about the tool particularly in the way that uh, um, on the real estate side, you have a lead uh, designation, right? It was um, in the beginning, people were like, hmm, this is a little, uh, but now so many, as people are constructing homes and, and, uh, and office buildings, et cetera, they look for a lead certification, right? They use it as a tool to understand what are the things that you can and should do in, in having sustainable construction and a sustainable building. And I think in so many ways, the tool is gonna provide, over 20,000 people have already used it. Um, the vast majority, uh, over 80% of uh, are uh, people of color and, um, and, uh, and over 60% are women. Right? And so we, we know that the, in the same way that it has helped, um, LEAD really helped people to be, have create more sustainable buildings that I think the, the tool is gonna allow uh, for more sustainable small businesses, uh, for people to understand what's missing and what are the things that they can and should do. Um, and, and so that's why for us, it was just, it was a commonsensical thing to do uh, in terms of investing in it. Great. If, if efforts like the business health score and the new equitable access fund are successful, what will that be the impact? What impact will that have on the economy? Um, well, <laughs> I think at the end of the day, we know that small business growth has been and uh, is and will continue to be the economic driver of, of our U.S. economy. Uh, and uh, and so. If it is successful, and I should say actually when it is successful, um, we're, it is it's gonna actually help to continue to strengthen the overall ecosystem. We're gonna see more small businesses formed uh, and more success. And the, you will hear small business owners say time and time again, um, if, if only I understood this better, if only I had known X, Y, and Z, 
Um, and, and that's what's really exciting about the, the scoring tool and, and the fun. It is looking at it in terms of what are the things that you can and should be doing differently and how do we provide a greater access to, to capital um, and credit options. And I think that's why um, it's going to be really useful uh, because it's meeting folks where they are. How do you define credit equity, and what is one change you'd like to see when it comes to making credit more accessible to small business owners? Uh, so uh, I would define credit equity as the ability for anyone, regardless of their ethnic background um, or zip code, uh, um, to be able to start a business and get access to, to, to credit. Um, credit equity would be the um, ability for banks, uh, CDFIs, uh, any kind of lending institutions to really meet small business owners where they are. Uh, so that would be the definition. Now to your second question, um, if, if I had a magic wand beyond obviously um, being able to predict the Powerball numbers, I would, <laughs> um, I would, you know, I would change how we do credit uh, scoring, and uh, particularly for small small business owners, it would it would immediately. I think that would transform our economy. I, I look at their recent study showed that um, if at, with the current growth rate of African American businesses, um, that the, under our current system, it would be about 256 years uh, before they would be able to uh, catch up in terms of. Uh, um, the, the current disparity, and so something is clearly broken, right? And it's not just up to Wells Fargo, although we're obviously taking a leadership position here, and obviously we're smart because we're getting with Hello Alice and, and Jen. Um, but it's it is it it's going to take us rethinking how we do how we think about credit, how we think about underwriting, and that's one of the exciting things about philanthropic dollars, right? Um, we are not. The, both the business side and the philanthropy side of the bank is trying to work together, but I can take a little bit more risk. The philanthropic side can explore and innovate and partner in a little different ways because they're not the same regulatory rules uh, that affect not just us, but all banks. Um, and, and that's why we're putting our time, energy, money, resources into partnerships like this because we have to, we have to fix it. Um, and, and when I say we, I mean the, the nation, if we're going to be successful. This is great, we're at time, but Otis, thank you so much. This was fascinating. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you.